All right. Hello, 14 us brothers and sisters. How are you? Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is September 7th, 2020. Is it really so? <laughs> Just a... We're looking at the potential of a few days to go. Um, I was hoping to get more videos out along the way, but at the same time, I don't know about you guys, we kind of feel like we're in this in this point of being kind of in this holding pattern. A whole bunch going on and things that have thrown us for a curveball, and yet it's we're in this midst, right? We've all been looking at September <laughs> like crazy. We've been talking about it for a long time now. And here we are in September, we've got all those prophetic words for September, and we know the year count. We know this is the time, we know the end of the solar, we know all of these things. So we're just on the tip of our toes, things are, are intense, and uh, I'm going to just keep sharing. Like I said, uh, I've got some more here for you today. I got this other little piece that was given today. It was um, in a forum, so you guys know, uh, for new people, we have the forum here in Ministry Revealed, and it was Stainless Sea. Oh, there it is, you see? Stainless Sea uh, posted that, and it was uh, a video from Jacko, and it wasn't that he revealed this, it was that he, he showed something in Luke 24 that caught my attention. He spoke about this verse right here in Luke 24 with flesh and bones. And I said, <laughs> I made a little note. I said, wait a minute. And that was it. I went to go look at that. And that is what today's video is going to build up to and, and get into and all of that. All right. It's, it's another exciting piece of evidence tied into all of these things that have already been revealed. It's, it's going to be more proof for those thinking this, uh, what about this whole 40 days thing? All right. So before we get going, I want to tell you all, thank you very much for helping me get to Ottawa. I am in Ottawa now. My mom, unfortunately, she is still in the hospital. Uh, we booked my ticket here to come out last minute, uh, like two days before uh, she was to come out of the hospital. And then... As I was coming, they said they were going to keep her longer. We thought they were going to keep her only till Tuesday, and they're not going to that, which is tomorrow. Uh, but they're going to keep her now till it looks like Thursday. So it has to do with uh, her where she had her surgery. the The wound isn't healing, and there was still some there was still bleeding coming through. So she's in good spirits. She she looks fine. I, I Skype her and uh, we were talking today and everything's good. You know, she just she wants to see for for those who don't know. Um, she she has a, a decent sized one bedroom apartment in Ottawa. She's on her own. She has a, a cousin and some friends, but they're old ladies, too. Right. And uh my sister's down in Texas, so she couldn't come. So I needed to come out to take care of her place and to get it ready and then take care of her for a little bit until she's able to maneuver again. And lo and behold, it's going to be a week, it looks like, before from me being here because I got here uh, on Thursday and it doesn't look like she's going to be released now until Thursday. So a little bit of unexpected, you know, curveballs and stuff along the way, but in her in her one bedroom apartment it needed cleaning man um it needed uh I, i'm actually sitting at her dining room table a little wooden dining room table here um there was no way i was sitting at this when i got here it was stacked about a foot and a half high and the chairs stacked with stuff and and i kind of went for the rest of her apartment too so I, I've been showing her for those who have been saying, oh man, you're brave to do that in, a, in your in your mother's place and a woman's place and it's all established. I'm like, man, she's been she's been on her own for decades now. And so you can imagine the stuff collected and not thrown out and everything else. Uh, it was a brave thing, but I sent her pictures along the way and I was walking around with my laptop today showing her on Skype. And she was very thankful, actually. She wanted this table cleared up, and I cleaned her stove and wiped down her cabinets and 
cleaned out two storage rooms in the front. You can actually walk in them now. So that's what I've been doing. I've been doing that. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of... It's kind of like a little break from everything I was doing. I miss my family, though. She's got a picture on the wall. I could see my, my wife and my two kids when they were little. So cute. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it was a change, and I can't help but think that the Lord's got something planned. You know, I'm obviously going to be here through the 11th. Uh, and at least to the 16th, uh, might even go to the end of that the following week if I have to extend it. Um, but I'll tell you, it keeps us uh, and keeps me on pins and needles, that's for sure, uh, knowing this season and time that we're in. So with that, you know, maybe it's uh, to have the one who understands what's about to happen to be her, be here with her because she didn't have anybody. Whereas my sister in Texas understands what's going on. And so does my family, and uh, we're all prepared. So, my mom loves the Lord too. I just mean prepared in case there's things we're we're going to be going through before the the escape. You know, we we try to understand what's going on, but we don't know. You know, with absolute certainty, every piece of these events we have a we have been given an incredible picture an incredible overall ability to be able to see the scriptures like never before with the end times. And uh, we're going to do some of that today. So it's just wild stuff, you know, really, really wild stuff. And so that's kind of where I'm at. And as long as I'm here, I will be doing uh, another video. It won't be so long on the next one. I didn't have internet for the first couple days here either for my laptop. So that was another reason. But with all that, my mom says, thank you very much. She's so grateful for the prayers and for the ability to get me here and for me to, to do what needed to be done. You know, things rotting in the fridge. And so we I emptied out the, the entire fridge and freezer and was able to stock it with some fresh stuff for her. So I'm, we're both very grateful for that. And this here is what I did uh, yesterday. You can even see the date, September 6th. Uh, Ottawa is a very beautiful city. Uh, I'm from Calgary, and Calgary is a nice city, and we've got the mountains close, so it's beautiful in that sense. But Calgary is a much newer city, right, compared to Ottawa. Ottawa is much older, and so it's got some of the older buildings. And I'm just going to show you four pictures here. This is the Ottawa Canal. So I parked down near the government buildings, which were over here, on this side of the street, and then I was parked over here. This canal, the canal is behind me, and this is the Ottawa River, and it goes all the way around. It goes for a few miles, and in the wintertime, it freezes over, and it's a global attraction. People come skating on it from all over the world. They set up cabins on it to buy beaver tails, these pastries. Uh, you can get hot chocolate on there. They have campfires and a maze of shrubs, and it goes on for miles and miles. It's a very, very fun thing to do. Uh, in the winter in Ottawa. I remember it when I was little. So this is just inside downtown. The The downtown mall is over here and across the street over on this side is the uh, market and it looked fantastic today, uh, yesterday because all of the shops now have patios in front of them. Excuse me, have patios in front of them. So it's uh it was full, it was busy and the shops were all open. It was just, it was a really fun time just to go walk around and kind of take a break and give my hands and back a rest. So I thought this was a nice picture to share. The other one you're going to see is I'm kind of like right beside this boat over here. I don't know if you can see these little people here, but I went to sit down there about two or three hours later after this picture, and I had my coffee and donut over there. Uh, I don't show it here, but this is where I was. This is that picture from above down to where those people were. That's not the same people, of course, but this is where that was. There's cafes and shops and all sorts of things along uh, along the river. What else? Oh, there I am, close up of my head. This is, uh, of course, in Canada. This is our government building. It's a it's a very famous, iconic type uh, building. It used to be all green tops because of the copper, right? When it when it uh, gets old, so they've been cleaning it for years and doing renos. Well. The, the grass, you're not allowed to really, you can't go walking across the grass. It's cur it's blocked off, but I was able to step on it to take the picture. So I was telling my kids uh, I was on the front lawn of uh, Parliament there. And there it is again. So this is just the, the ever-burning fire that they have. 
And I just kind of crouched down and took a picture of the whole thing. And that's our government building. All righty. So I want to share you guys that and uh, just give you a big thank you for uh, helping us get here and take care of what we needed to cool. as I take a sip of coffee. All right. Oh, see, look at this. I noticed this yesterday. My time says 7.15. That's Calgary time. My laptop didn't automatically change. So it's 9.15 where I am now. All right. Here's another exciting thing. Uh, our brother Jimmy reminded me. I was on the phone with Jimmy uh, earlier today to see if I can set up to go and meet with him, right? Maybe we can grab a coffee, grab a little bite to eat somewhere. And he's about two and a half hours away from here. Now, for those who don't know Canada, two and a half hour drive is not a big deal, right? We're not crossing countries or anything like that. Um, I will be crossing provinces though. So I do expect to go see him hopefully tomorrow, uh, no later than uh, Wednesday. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, based on what's happening with my mom. But he had reminded me, because I it, I had forgotten. Uh, it was one of these, uh, this video right here. So you guys can see, this is these are the first videos I did. And see, this one doesn't say three years yet. See, this says three, three, three. Well, I started the ministry at this video here, which was split in two on June 16th, 17th of uh, 2017. But when everything changed for me, it was during this video right here. During this video, we don't need to play it. On September 8th, 2017, during this video, while looking and explaining a little bit of the gospel in Luke, uh, of Luke's discourse, and the Revelation 12 sign that everybody was talking about, you could see on September 8th, my title was after the September 23rd sign. So there was already something brewing and that had happened in the middle of this video. I, I don't remember where, uh, what marker it was, but it was in this video right here, three years ago tomorrow, that something changed. I saw something in Revelation chapter 12 compared to what I was reading in Luke, compared to what we'd been taught looking at Isaiah 66. And so for those that don't know, just briefly, what it was is everybody was saying this is the rapture in, um, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, right? And her child was caught up, and we know this is the rapture. Everybody was talking about this being the rapture. However, in verse 2, it says, And she, being with child, travailed in birth and pained. I said, well, wait a second. How is this possible? I mean, this clearly is saying was caught up, but this is saying she's travailing in birth. And Isaiah 66 was telling us that before she travails in birth, she brought forth. That if it was going to be a pre-trib, it had to be Revelation 12.1 or just before it or at that time before she travails. So how is it everybody was saying this was the rapture which it clearly appeared to be. And I just said, wait a second. And that's all I did. I just kind of, I understood something was going on in that video. And I said, and I said to myself, and I said actually on the video, you know, if there's anything that comes from this, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> so lo and behold, three years later to the day tomorrow, um, the journey is coming full circle. And how about that right into September? Man, it's God works in his ways and it's pretty wild, isn't it? We're looking at the connection to the September 23rd sign this year. Uh, we know Paul, he was gone for three years and then came back with the understanding he had to grow in love. He had to grow in the scripture. He had to grow in all of those things. And then the Lord brings him back after three years and then he spends 15 days with... Um, uh, uh, at somebody's house, I can't remember who it was, James or, or Simons or something like that. He spends 15 days there. And we talked about that not too long ago, didn't we? It was kind of interesting. So this is when it started for me. This was uh, September 8th, 2017. But isn't it interesting because when we talked about this this year, or a little earlier this year, you take uh, the 8th of September and you add 15 days and it's the anniversary of September 23rd. 
Do 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 do. <laughs> it was just some pretty wild stuff, you know. These connections uh, over over this period of time and the the revelations have just been so incredible, so so incredible. You know, I don't think we need to belabor or beat down the point anymore. That you know, it's it's coming this year. It, it's going to be this month. We know it's this month. We know it's this year. We know the solar cycle. We know the metatonic. We know the signs. We know the three-year connection in scripture. We, I mean, on it. We know the 13th year to fulfill and then the 14th and on and on and on. Right? What else do we know? For those that uh, are on the forum, which you can get to through Ministry Revealed, join the... 500 600 whatever people there in the forum and share all sorts of things um but for those that saw in the forum you know we know the overall picture of the end of days is a 21 year picture and the 22nd is the final jubilee year when those first seven easy years which we call quote unquote easy years excuse me like um like uh, Jacob, right, when they, they flew by, they felt like days to him. They, they flew by like days because he was so excited to be working for his bride, okay? And then, boom, when that day was over, bang, he got her. And then it's 14 years. The Lord comes after 13, fulfills the 14th year, and then the Jubilee year begins. We've known this now for a while. And I was looking through uh, some pictures that my mom had. My mom's got some, uh, obviously, you know, she's got some crazy stuff of clippings and stuff that she kept. I was in a baby contest when I was, uh, oh, 10 months or something like that. I was in a baby contest and then she's got the paper, newspaper clippings with me. I think I was the winner in it. And uh, <laughs> just so cute, you know, it was awesome. And then there was another one when I was three years old. It was this uh, corn festival in uh, in Sault Ste. Marie. And I was the cover picture for the kid eating corn for the first time. And just <laughs> wild pictures. But the reason I bring it up is uh, I saw the house I grew up in. And funny enough, the house number I grew up in, 21. So again, another one of those things that just makes you go, hmm. <laughs> awesome, right? So, you know, we've talked about this many times, this, this, the, the 21 years and when the seven have passed and bang, the 14 are going to begin. That is the beginning of the 14 years. You know, we know that everybody likes to say, oh, the tribulation, it's seven years, it's seven years. Well, it's not even seven, even in their, in their thought process of saying seven years, we all know it's impossible because God rests on the seventh year. So now how do you have them explain that the tribulation is six years, not seven? And even that would be wrong because really it's six years of seals, the seventh rest, six years of trumpets, the seventh rest with the Lord being here. So I'm showing you this because there was um, an interesting article that came up because remember, six years and the seventh is rest. Six years and the seventh is rest. Six years and the seventh is rest. Well, what happened in this count, in this cycle here, was the six years, and we were through the seven as well. We've been in this in this holding pattern, if you will, for the past year. The six years and seventh rest. People look at things and they say, well, no, we're, we're to base all of the, the uh, Jubilee cycles off of Israel. So when they, 1917... And then 19, uh, was it 1967? And yes, I agree to an extent. There is a cycle based on that. There is this clear cycle that can be connected to it. However, there is a cycle that was from Christ's death and resurrection. That cycle on a Jubilee cycle after the sevens, because you see, this is one, two, three sets of seven. Well, before this, there was four, five, six. Remember, it's seven sets of seven, 50th. Seven sets of seven, 50th. Seven sets of seven, 50th. Okay? This is the last one. This is the one that's going to take us to the end 
to when he will return after the 20th feet down on the Mount of Olives. You see? But the reason I'm bringing this up is to show you guys something that I had posted in the forum that uh, I wanted to share with you guys quickly in this video. And that is uh, Yom uh, Hakesh, call, which is the hidden day. Now, I've heard from others recently. I haven't been watching anybody except a few minutes of one video, which I was telling you that started this whole thing today, which was Jacko's video. I got into about, well, 12, 13 minutes into it, and I went into a whole study into looking at this. But the reason I'm bringing this up and having shared it yesterday, I heard from others in comments that I guess other people have been talking about the hidden day. And it was um, uh, our brother Dennis had shared this with me in a link. And I, I started reading through it and I was blown away by a hidden little gem within this story. So this Yom Hakesh, I think that's how you say it is just another name for Rosh Hashanah. So here's an example. The following are the different names used to describe the first day of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. So we know Rosh Hashanah is one of them, of course. That's the main one. Here it is, Ram Teruah, which is the day of awakening or shout. The Feast of Trumpets, right, which is day of judgment. This one here, which is day of remembrance. And here's the one we're talking about, which is called day of the hiding or hidden day okay these are all the names for the same event okay kind of like what we say with booths it, booths is tabernacles is this is you know it's got a lot of different names but it means the same thing it's the same day but isn't it interesting the the different names that come for it now when we read these things we tend to think oh uh, uh they all apply to now it doesn't mean every single thing that we read about a specific day that we know is connected to the Feast of the Lord and where he's going to do things. It doesn't mean that every one of those things are going to happen on that day when things begin. One of them will, but there's probably going to be still another one and still another one. All right. But in particular now, let me show you this one here, the one about the hidden day. You know, it's one thing to to read this. And when I first read it, about reading about the hidden day, it's it's very exciting. But what you're about to see in the brackets, I don't think makes sense to anybody else out there except us here in this ministry. Why? Because we understand. We understand the count. We understand that what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When the seventh year is over, the 14 years begin. Seven of seals, seven of trumpets in the final jubilee. It's the same as like saying, what would that be? Uh, uh, 42 to 35. It'd be like 35, 42, 49, right? So from 35 to 42 to 49 and the 50th is the 22nd year. So when I say the 15th or we say the 22nd, it's the same as saying the 50th. When you say the 14th or the 21st, it's the same as saying the 49th. It's the Jubilee cycle, all right? It's just that these are the final three cycles of seven. When the first one's gone, these are the final two cycles of seven. Okay? That's what's going on. We showed that actually in, uh, in additional books in the last video too. All right? We even showed how second Baruch in this video here, Second Baruch showed how it said these two tribulations will be nothing compared to this judgment time at the end when it's over, right? So isn't that interesting? It says these two tribulations. Well, nobody else is teaching 14 years, yet it's all over the place. It's in the extra biblical books. It's all throughout scripture. It's everywhere. So when, when we're looking at this, sorry, this is what I want to show so the reason this was interesting is as we read this about the hidden day, which is what everybody else has been touching on, it's not so much for us about the hidden day. 
It's the evidence before the hidden day that's going to reveal to us what is coming first. Okay, watch this. Another idiom for Feast of Trumpets is the hidden day. All the Feast Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah is the most mysterious one. There are a few scriptures about it. The primary reference, reference is in Leviticus 23. He's talking about it as the Feast of Trumpets. And there's the scripture, okay, proclaiming and uh, sounding the alarm. Now, watch this. Yom Hakesh, meaning the day of the hiding or the hidden day, is the feast that is concealed as to when it starts. Okay, we all know that, like Feast of Trumpets, right? We don't know because it's the day and hour nobody knows. It's, it's a two-day event because they don't know when they're going to see the first crescent of the moon. It can only start when the moon begins to reflect again. The new moon of Tishri is neither announced nor blessed in the synagogue. The term Kesh or Kesh <laughs> is derived from the Hebrew word uh, Kaha, which means to conceal, cover, or hide. So you can see I was reading this and I'm thinking, whoa, this is getting really interesting here. You know, as if the, the bride being taken and being hidden away. It's kind of what it sounds like, doesn't it? But get ready for this. Every day during the month of Elul, a trumpet is blown to warn the people to turn back to God. Okay? We know this. This is in Elul. The month of Elul, this is where they blow the trumpet every day and it's about turning back to the Lord. Okay? That warning time. Watch this. Except for the last day of Elul, but not every last day of Elul. Okay, where is Elul? Here it is right here. See, we're in the month of Elul right now. Where are we now? We are right here on the 7th. Okay, we're looking at the potential of the 11th, guys. Whew. So awesome. We're right here right now. So where's the last day of Elul? Right here on the 18th. Check that out. The 18th. We've talked about this date before. Very, very big deal this year, if if nothing on uh, the 11th. But don't don't dismiss it, right? We're we are in super watch mode between here and here. This it, it, everything's about to change. Between here and here, the world is going to change. Everything is going to change. Okay. But this is one we were talking about as well. Okay, a big deal one we were talking about. Well. It's before Rosh Hashanah. It's the day before. So what day would this be? According to the Hebrew calendar, this would be what? This would be the day Enoch was taken. Because Enoch was 365, right? 365 years, there was a type and shadow there for us to understand in days. This is the last day of the year on their, on their calendar. Okay, on the civil calendar. We've also looked at this period here being uh, right here, actually, when the Lord returned to begin his 40 days. OK, we're either looking at it to be at this period. OK, this being the last day and this starting it or this being the last day and this starting it. OK, so he's either coming to begin his 40 days here or he's beginning to come his 40 days in here. Why? Because this is the end of the solar cycle, okay? We know in Psalms 19, it said that when he would, uh, 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 was it when he would return as a strong man, ready to run a race, right? That he had finished his circuit. Well, the circuit is it's all about the circuit of the sun, the actual S O N in connection to the S U N. Right? Sorry, the S-U-N in connection to the S-O-N. So this is why we're looking here as well. But this is also a big deal. This we're looking at for Gentile. And this is relating to, to Hebrew then when he returns. Okay? So why now is this one such a big deal or potentially such a big deal? Because of what I was telling you guys earlier. Remember with this. Okay? Watch this. Except for the last day of Elul... The day preceding Rosh Hashanah, Elul 29 is known as Day of Release. The 29th day of Elul, the last day of the year, the 365 day of the year, 
Elul 29 is known as the day of release. Now, others may have talked about this before. But what they didn't maybe fully understand is that's not the end of the story. This is right here. It is known as the day of release at the end of a Shemitah year. What does that mean? It means that could only happen once every seven years. When? At the end of a Shemitah year. What have I been teaching for a long time? Once this seven year is over, the 14 years begins. What did we say? When Jacob, his seven easy years, or the years that flew by that seemed as days, when they come to an end, the escape happens and the 14 years begin. So do you see what I'm getting at? This day, the 29th day of Elul, is only a release day at the end of a seven-year cycle. That end of first seven easy years, or years that flew by, end this year. On September 18th. Only this year. How can we know this? How do we know this? Because it's all based on Christ's death and resurrection. We went all the way back to the garden when we spoke about this. Adam, when he was born, he didn't fall into sin right away. Right? He didn't, he didn't sin and do what he did right away. He got a wife eventually, right? Became from a portion of his body. Then they were there for a while. They did their thing. It's believed that um, that uh, Adam was 33 and a half years old. You see, he was 33, 34 years old time frame when he fell. That's why Christ, from his death and resurrection in 33, is... 4,000 years. It wasn't from Christ's birth. At his birth, he didn't do anything. He was just born. What mattered was his life, and then the key is his death and resurrection. That was when the count began. That was the 4,000 years. We know where the 6,000 years is. We know that it's 2,000 years. From his death and resurrection, which the Bible will tell us in in Hosea 6 as two days. Which is a day is a thousand years. We know Jesus is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives at the start of 2,000 years. When the 6,000 years have hit. That's when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. So all we got to do is add it up. Or subtract it from 2033. That's it. Subtract it. Fall of 33. Because it's going to be after the 2,000 years. So it'll be 2,000 years and then from spring to fall. That's when he's coming back at the fall of 33. Feet down on the Mount of Olives. Shining as light from one end unto the other. That is how we know. That. This is a Shemitah year that we're in right now, a biblical godly Shemitah year, not a, not a what they're doing in the land year for which the Lord is upset with them. This is a true Shemitah year based on the Lord himself. And that's why I was so excited to share this with everybody was because this key right here. Brothers and sisters, there is a release day only once every seven years at the end of a Shemitah year. Is this what we're looking at? 
You see, and that's why we say, you know, we, we have to be patient. Is, is September 11th, do we have things for September 11th? People say, well, since when is God counting September 11th looking at a, at a Gentile calendar? It's not a Gentile calendar. It's a cycle. It's a cycle based on the sun, which is what we know from Psalms 19 as well, which is connected to the beginning of tribulation, the beginning of the 40 days with the Lord. But we also have the 22nd of Elul. The 22nd of Elul is the final 50-day count to the, what was it, the uh, Festival of New Oil. This is the final one. There were three 50-day counts, and we found this from the Temple Scrolls. So, yes, this is, this is a, a Gentile calendar, September 11th, but there was also Gentile calendar, September 11th of 2001. And the solar cycle is 19 years. This is 19 years later. And every 19 years, it's the 22nd of Elul. September 11 was the warning cycle of 19 years. So, you know, we're, we're, on, the, we're on our edge of our seat right now. But I just want to keep everybody aware of these other things that are there. These other things that, that seem very important to, to be aware of. Something called a day of release. Which can only happen on a cycle that we understand in, in Christ's count. Okay? Is this day of release for us or is it for somebody else? Is this, the, is this day of release for... You know, like I was saying, that doesn't mean everything being spoken about is for that period of time. Well, let me ask you this. If the day of release is the last day of the year of a, at the end of a Shemitah cycle, that means it's after or at the last day of the seventh year. Well, guess what? When we go look at Mark and at Matthew and we see that it's after six and the Lord returns, right? At the end of the sixth seal, the Lord shows up on Mount Zion. There's a battle. He seals the 144,000. And then there's a rapture. And then you go to chapter 8 and you see the seventh seal is about half an hour, which is a type and shadow of about six months. Well, at the last day of the of the seventh year of rest or of from seals is already been six months of peace and quiet. The rapture already happened well before this time, several months before the last day of the Shemitah. So it can't be at the end of seals. Well, what about trumpets? Well, when we go to Matthew, we see that it's after six days or six years as well. And at that point, the Lord is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. So it can't be after six either. You see, it would appear that this is connected to this year. Could it be, could it also be connected that when he finishes the, you know, the war and the battle in that final year and the 14 years are over, could it be related to that day of release for the Jews at the end of trumpets, at the end of the 14 years? It could be that too. But what have we noticed in all this? What have we also come to understand? That just like we understand there's 14 years and 50 and 50 equals 14, there could be one at the beginning, which we know there is, and there could be one at the end. You know, I don't know how this is necessarily day of release because they will already have been in hiding for three and a half years, you know, at the end of trumpets. So what it could be is in relation to the end, it could be a, a release as this day of release because they're all going to be able to come back into their land and the tribes will all receive their lands again, right? Could be that release. So you see, just like we have 50-day count, when that 50-day count is done, boom, you have the 14 years. When the 14 years is over, it equals what? The 50th of the Jubilee. See, 50 in the day count with weeks, 14 years then next, and then you've got the year count going to the Jubilee. So it's very, very interesting and worth keeping our eyes uh <laughs> our eyes and ears open to sorry give me one second and keeping our eyes and ears open to uh just being ready like we say now at all times 
Now, let me show you some things here. We've talked on a lot over the past three years about the last chapter of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay, For those that are new to the ministry, first of all, what you need to do is you really need to go watch this playlist, even watch the, the first two 30-minute videos. You're going to understand who the Gospels are speaking to in relation to end time seeing. And you're going to understand what I'm talking about here when I say 14 years, the two sets of seven. There's a reason why there's six seals and the seventh one is rest. And there's six trumpets and the seventh one is rest. You're going to find all that and more in watching those first two videos. And then you can skip to the fourth video in there and understand why we've been all confused all of these years, all of these generations, because we've all been taught the end times from Matthew. And the reason we've been taught all these things from Matthew is because they've taught us, and as they have understood, the pastors and the schools and everything, that all the Gospels are the same thing, just a little bit of a difference here and there for whatever perspective you like to read it from. But we've been revealed here in these last three years as I started the video, that first day that I knew something else was happening, that was the day this all began. And I came to understand and to reveal and to teach and to preach it over and over with everybody that the reason we've been messed up is because we've all been taught everything from Matthew. It has nothing to do with Mark just giving us a, another perspective and maybe for some people it suits them more. And Luke is another perspective in the three synoptic gospels and maybe that one suits them more. That's not at all what's going on. Luke speaks to the Gentile bride of Christ. The ones that will have the white robes as the wedding bride. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church. The majority, the 90% of the church that's going to be left behind. That said, all they do, if I say I believe in Jesus, I'm saved. Oh, eventually you'll be saved. But if you just kept living your life as you always did, you see, it's people will say, oh, it's not works. It's not works. I'm not saying it's works. I'm saying if Christ is in you, you won't keep doing those same things you did before. Your life will start to change. Does it mean you, 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 you're perfect and, and everything's going to be better instantly? Heck no. Of course not. But you're going to have that conviction in you and you're going to re be repentant. And you're going to be strengthened and you're going to keep from those things. And you're going to try harder to keep from those things. Is that works? That's what some people call works. Being a better person for Christ because he dwells in you doesn't mean, you see, you see what I'm saying? It's Christ in you that, that makes you want to be better and do better. That's why it says faith without works is dead. It doesn't mean you didn't have faith. It said faith without works. So you can have faith, but you're dead. Your faith is dead. Yeah, you have it because you called on him and you believe him. But if you don't do any good, if you don't change your ways and, and become better for him in it, with him in you, well, then you, you don't have any works to prove you even belong to him. You're not talking to people about him. You're not, you're not well, you know, I teach it, but in, in just how you live your life. That's not the works that people qualify that they think, oh, it's works. Oh, you're works based. No, that's not it. It is faith. It is repentance and water baptism for the receiving of the Holy Ghost. And once he's in you, you're going to desire to change more and more and more to be more like Christ. See, that's why the 90% is being left. They don't realize it. Who are the greatest scoffers among everybody you talk to to be ready that the end of days are coming? I'd say probably out of everybody you talk to, I'd say probably 90% of them are in the church and think you're a nut job. The other people that you talk to, the other 10% that, that say, oh, you're crazy, are probably those that don't even believe in Christ. 
It's the church that's the biggest part that thinks we're crazy. There's only about 10% of the church that's actually watching. Watching and praying is part of qualifying according to the scripture. Okay, so Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the sleeping left behind church. And Matthew is speaking to Judah. John gives us the overall big picture. He is talking to the, that portion, if you will, of, um, of the 144,000. But it, it's, that's not the focus. The focus is the overall picture, which makes it very interesting that you have these synoptic gospels and John on his own. See, it's the reason why John has 21 chapters. It's Holy Spirit inspired. Like everything. It wasn't just the words that were inspired to all these guys by the Holy Spirit. It was the division of the chapters and verses as well. Okay? The seven years are coming to an end. When the seven years come to an end, right at the start, what do we see? The woman caught in adultery brought to the Lord. It's awesome stuff, right? How many times in these Gospels have we gone into the last chapter of the synoptic ones in particular with Matthew, Mark, and Luke? You see, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Christ's resurrection is in the last chapter. Luke 24, Mark 16, Matthew 28. But in John, it's in chapter 20. Hey, we talked about this in the past. Why is the resurrection in chapter 20 and not in chapter 21? Because the Lord returns, remember, at the end of 20 years. At the end of what? The 14 years. See, at the end of this 13th year, and he's going to fulfill the 14th year slash 21st year here, having come feet down on the Mount of Olives for that great and terrible battle that we see in Zechariah chapter 14. See, that's why Zechariah chapter 14. It goes chapters to years as well. See, that's why he comes at the end of 20. So what do we see in John? The resurrection type and shadow when he returns in John chapter 20. But in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's the last chapter. And in these last chapters alone, check out how incredible this is. Remember, this is what caught my attention today. This one verse, not everything else he was talking about, but this one verse. This one verse. Luke 24, verse 39. Okay? But remember, we've gone through just the last chapter of Matthew, Mark, and Luke and revealed so much in relation to the end of days. Who is speaking to in relation to what, when, where, who goes, who stays, who, who is carried away and who is received. Then when he stays till the end of the world. I mean, check this out. Just in the last chapter of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to show you just a, a few of the dozen plus things that we've revealed in relation to the end of days understanding just in these gospels alone. Remember this in, in Mark chapter 16? Notice how strange this name Salome, uh, Sal Salami stands out. You don't see it in Matthew and you don't see it in Luke. So why is she mentioned here? Well, we know she's one of the good women that, that was a part of it and going there and so forth. However, in the story of John being beheaded by, uh, by Herod, it was Salome who caused it to happen. She wanted John the Baptist's head. Not this Salome. Another one. Herod's, uh, Herod's wife, I guess it is. And not the daughter. I think it was the wife. Herod's wife was the one that wanted it. So isn't it interesting that out of all of these resurrection stories in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, only Marx has it. Why? Because we've explained this portion of time is during what? Well, it's in Mark. Mark is to who? The sleeping church during the time of seals. So what are we seeing the type and shadow of? 
the one who did the beheading on John. What's happening during seals? The beheading of Christians at about midway through seals. You see, is there going to be stuff happening before? Yes, just like there is now. And there has been for centuries. But when it really kicks in at about mid-seals, for those refusing the Antichrist and the mark and everything else, it just so happens we get the name Salome there. There's a reason, and that is the revelation of the reason. How about this? In Luke chapter 24, this conversation only happens in Luke's final chapter at the resurrection. And it's one of our favorite ones. Well, one of my favorite ones now. One of them. I got dozens now, right? In Luke 24, verse 3. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Okay? And they found not the body of Christ. And it came to pass they were much perplexed. So they could not find the body of Christ. What does that mean? His bride. It's not the whole church. It's his bride. They could not find the body of Christ. Well, remember when we were saying earlier, the first Adam, Christ is this, like the second Adam, it says. So go to the first Adam and his bride was taken what? She was a piece from inside his body. And when the two come together, the two become one, right? One body. And so what do we have? Only in Luke's gospel do we have the body of Christ or the body of the Lord Jesus was not found. What's the story of this resurrection? 40 days. 40 days. Remember that. That's tied into today's topic. Okay? To this portion I'm going to reveal. It's about the 40 days. It's evidence. More evidence of this 40 days of the Son of Man that comes first. For those that need just a little refresher, there's evidence in Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, we see the Lord says he's going to come as lightning from one end unto the other. He says, but first, I need to be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in this time until the day that they entered the ark. Well, that was 40 days. Then he gives us the second time. So the first time is going to be like the 40 days. The second time is going to be like Lot. Well, that's at the end of the sixth seal when, when the stars of heaven, meteor and all that is falling down to the earth. And the final time is like lightning from heaven. That's when he comes feet down, lightning from one end unto the other, feet down on the Mount of Olives. But this first one here was 40 days like Noah. When we go into Luke chapter 11, here's the thing. In Luke 11, because we know who the Gospels are really speaking to with the end time eyes of understanding, we see only in Luke. Does he say he's going to be a sign? The Son of Man is going to be a sign as Jonah was. So shall the Son of Man be to this generation, this final generation. You see, did the Queen of the South come to the Lord and rise up and do all those things during the 40 days? No. Christ showed himself to a few people during the 40 days and then he was gone. This is an end time prophecy here in the Gospels. And he's telling us that it's 40 days. So again, when we're looking at these things in relation to his resurrection here, in particular with Luke, it's connected to his 40 days. The bride, his body is gone and the 40 days are going to begin. The world is going to be perplexed. The world is going to be perplexed. They're going to be in awe. They're going to say, what has gone on? What has happened? You see, and the women were there. And then what happened? We also did a story about Peter. Then arose Peter. Who's Peter a type and shadow of? Peter is a type and shadow of the church. Remember? He's a type and shadow of the church. So after the bride is gone, after the women had gone to sea and everybody became perplexed, the church wakes up and says, wait a second, what's going on? When we read it in Mark, we see it's a little bit different in the story in Mark that he was a part of it. When we go to Matthew, there's no mention of Peter. Why is there no mention of Peter in Matthew? Because Peter, the church, 
is already gone. They were gone at the end of seals. This is about the end of trumpets at his return. Feet down on the Mount of Olives. So that's why there's no Peter there. <laughs> Guys, these are glimpses of the incredible revelations that we've had. How about this one? In Luke chapter, again, chapter 24. A sip of coffee. In Luke chapter 24. This is when I was talking, uh, when I was on the phone earlier with, uh, with uh, Jimmy to see if I'll be able to set something up to go see him. Um, I was explaining this revelation that came today. And he says, yeah, just like Jesus. Remember, he was, he was eating with them and so forth. I said, exactly. I said, thanks for that one. I'm going to add that to the video because this is what Jimmy mentioned. And we did a video on this as well, more than once. All right, right here. Check this out. It says in Luke 24, verse 36. Uh, wait, not this one. Where does he eat with them? Where is it? All these things must be fulfilled. Understand me, love, uh, preach among them. Where is it? 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 Did I go too far? <laughs> Come on, I just lost my train of Well, I didn't lose my train of thought. I just suddenly forgot where it was. Oh, here it is. See, I had it highlighted in yellow, and I thought I had it highlighted in a different color. Luke 24, verse 30. And this is where it is. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and break and gave to them and their eyes were open. So he sat to eat with them and he took the bread and he gave it to them. Well, do you know in the story of Mark's account, he does no such thing? He doesn't sit and eat with them. Right? Listen to what he says. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat to eat, and he unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. They didn't believe this is like the type and shadow of the 144,000. You got to remember, we're at the end of Mark's chapter, of Mark's gospel, which means in the end time story, it is the end of seals. And so he came down. He's now coming at the end of seals, like we see at the end of the sixth seal. And chapter seven of Revelation, the first half of the seventh year of rest is coming. And what happens? Only in Mark do we see where Christ appears to two of them, to two people. He appears to them walking along the road and he appears to them in another form. This is only spoken about in Mark. Why? Because this is the time at the end of seals that the two witnesses are going to show up. That's why it's there. And they're to go tell who? The residue. The remaining ones. The ones that were what? That were left behind. They were left. So they're to go tell the remaining ones. These two witnesses are to go tell the remaining ones. And when Jesus gets there, they're eating. And he's angry with them. And he, he, he just rails on them, if you will, right? And then he tells them to go preach to every creature. Um... And he that baptized this and is baptized shall believe these guys are going to be able to do what? They're going to be able to, in his name, cast out devils and they shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents and nothing's going to hurt them. That's not what it said in Luke. In Luke, he said he was going to, he, in Luke, he said he ate with them. Remember that. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So he sits down. And he eats with them and serves them. Their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished. Only used one time. Only used one time. Right there in Luke. See, he wasn't mad at this group. He wasn't mad at them at all. And then he said, he shows up again. And this is what we're going to get into a little bit more. This portion here with being terrified and flesh and bone. Flesh and bone is going to be a key piece. You see, but at no point is he upset with them. 
And then he tells them they're now going to go out. So he opens their understanding. They're going to go out. He tells them to that they're going to preach repentance and the remission of sins and should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And look at this. There's no ability of stepping on scorpions and taking up serpents and, and doing all that stuff. None of it. Because who is this group? Well, this is the end of Luke. This is like what? This is the end of the, this is the, when seals are about to begin. This is during the 40 days that we're talking about. This is the 40 days of the son of man. Here on the earth, when the 14 years begins, I believe with all my heart, this is what's coming in September. This is about to begin with the escape. That's why you had the body of Christ gone and the world being perplexed. And then the church freaking out and saying, what? They finally rise up and realize they missed it. But the Lord shows up. The Lord shows up. And these people that he shows up to, this group that's chosen to work seals, they're not going to be treading on scorpions and on serpents and doing all that because they're going to be working during seals. This is the group, there's going to be some beheadings going on. When we saw at the end of Mark's, you saw the power that that group was given because they're the ones who are going to work trumpets. And during trumpets, they're going to need that power to tread on the scorpions and everything when the pit is opened. Right? Taking up serpents so that nothing can hurt them. That's why it's being spoken of like that. <laughs> Don't you love this? I mean, especially this might be harder to follow for, for new people. But for those that have been watching for a bit, I mean, I'm just scratching the surface on the many, many, many different things that have been revealed here in this ministry just in relation to the last chapter of each gospel. All right, how about this one? In Luke, you get the word carried up, which is to take up. What is, what is this type and shadow telling us? Well, think of the bride, right? When, when you cross over the threshold of the door of your new house or whatever, when you get married, you carry your bride over the threshold right you'd say well what does that really have to do with talking about jesus it's a type and shadow because watch when we go to the last chapter of mark which would be the time at the end of seals look at what it says he was received up he was received up well now why is that interesting because the church that was left behind isn't his bride. They're the guests. So if they're the guests, wouldn't you receive guests to your wedding? Hello. Hello. How about Matthew? Go to Matthew 28. And what do we see in the Matthew in Matthew 28? This he doesn't sit down to break bread with this group or anything. They're going to the mountain. Yeah, the mountain of the Lord at the end of trumpets. The Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And he tells them, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I don't know if you guys realize that. Yeah, there, there's a story to understand that's happened in the past after his death and resurrection and, and everything is his. But the story's not over. We've been getting taught from Matthew all of our lives missing the first part of the story completely missing the first part of the story this is at the end of matthew so if the end of luke is the 40 days of the son of man if the end of mark is the is the uh, is uh, in chapter 16 is the end of seals then matthew the end of matthew is the end of trumpets that's precisely right that's why all power is given unto him now in heaven and on earth. The same wording that you see at the end, at the beginning of the seventh trumpet. You see, even it says, um, his countenance was like lightning. This countenance being like lightning and there's a great earthquake is the end of the sixth seal. Uh, sorry, the end of the sixth trumpet. 
it's the great earthquake the the lord is descended now coming on mount zion and his countenance is like lightning remember from one end unto the other how did we never catch this before you know i it's easy to say it a little bit more so now because we understand all these things but looking at it now we think my goodness all of these things that the church was being accused of for or that the scriptures that the lord people were accusing christianity and accusing the bible of being contradictory it wasn't contradictory at all it was giving us the evidence of the future it was letting us know who was being spoken to when and for what purpose and so what does that mean this hasn't even happened yet this hasn't even happened yet here in matthew you saw at in in uh at the end of marks he it says and now he he sat on the right hand of the father this one here is now when everything's his and we saw in luke just a minute ago how he was uh, uh, um, carried up like a bride is the type and shadow we see in mark how he's received up like the guests as the type and shadow and what do we see in matthew he's like there's no longer preaching going on in the world because he is now here how did how did anybody explain this in the future in, uh, in the past how did anybody explain this as having already happened in the past how he's now telling them to teach isn't that a contradiction because in in mark uh and in luke it said go and preach this says go and teach that's not the same thing why isn't it teaching anymore because the lord has returned feet down on the mount of olives all power in heaven and in earth everybody will have seen him coming everybody will know that he's here there's no longer need to preach only teaching to observe his ways and listen to what he says not carried up not received up not anywhere up but coming down and now that he's here lo i am with you always even until the end of the world isn't that awesome guys i don't know about you but i love this you know i've been i haven't put a video out in a week and i'll tell you you know <laughs> i'm i'm happy more than happy to be helping my mom and getting all this set up and and preparing things but at the same time even more so i know where we're at i understand what's about to take place everything on earth is literally about to change and it's going to happen this month and i believe it's highly probable it's going to happen while i'm here and i can't help but think lord why what do you have planned what is going on all of this to happen now you know if we're here for a little bit i don't want my mom you know being left alone in a panic and worrying on her own so maybe that's part of why the lord has me here but the body is taken at the beginning see then you have his 40 days then you have the 40 days remember even the last video and we're going to get into this remember even in the last video here uh right here this one here that we had that other piece of revelation that happened right again without going into all of the different pieces when we go into the the discourse of matthew mark and luke right matthew 24 mark 13 and luke 21 we see that luke talks nothing about the false prophet and antichrist right false prophets and false christs mark talks about it but not until the second portion of his discourse in matthew the first portion of his discourse only talks about the false prophet and then in the second portion of his discourse it talks about false prophets and false christs again it was an awesome revelation i don't know if it was the last one maybe it's the video before i can't remember now it was awesome well this is that same type of thing going on 
this is that same type of thing. And the relation to it is Christ's 40 days evidence. Remember when I was talking to Jimmy and I said, these are the, this is what's taking place. We're going to see evidence of Christ here. Listen to this. This is only, of course, only spoken about in Luke. In fact, remember what we were saying we were looking for? I was looking at flesh and bone. Okay? Flesh and bone. Check this out. Flesh and bone. See, with the bone, there it is. Is only spoken about in Luke. You say, oh, well, it's there in Matthew and in John. No, no, that's not what it's saying. It's saying a bone of him that is broken. That's not the same thing. Over here it says, uh, but are with are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. That's not the same thing. This one here in Luke is speaking of Christ. These are not, right? This This one here is not. Okay, and again, it's in Luke 24, the last chapter of Luke. Why does it matter? Check this out. Remember, only in Luke, again, this part is also only in Luke, that I told you guys earlier. He sat to eat with them and took bread and blessed it and gave it to them. No railing accusations. See, how, how did the church explain that before? No railing accusation. He sits down and blesses them. He gives them to eat and he eats with them. Yet Mark, he rails, uh, he rails them for their disbelief. They're eating. He's not eating. He never broke bread and opened up their understanding. It's a completely different story. It hasn't happened yet. See? So what do we have here? He's sits down and he eats with them. Now, let me ask you this. This is why Jimmy mentioned it. If you're not in human form, can you eat? Can you actually sit down and eat and drink and do all those things if you're not in a human form? If he hasn't taken on flesh and bone? He can't, can he? In Mark, is he coming down like, uh, like Jesus when he was walking around? No, he's coming down on the rock carved without hand. He's coming down heavenly Mount Zion, descending paradise he's coming with. He's not coming down as the, as the man. Okay, how about in Matthew? In Matthew, he's coming like lightning. The whole world is going to see him in the fall of 33, coming down, feet down on the Mount of Olives. He's not coming like a regular man. Well, in neither Mark nor in Matthew did he sit down and eat with them. But in Luke, he does. And to sit down and eat with somebody, you need to be what? You need to be flesh and bone. Check this out. Luke 24, 36. And as they thus begged, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. Remember, he vanished. Okay, he vanished. Now he comes back. He stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified. They were terrified, thinking they had seen a ghost. Remember this word terrified? This word terrified is only used twice in the Bible. And of course, the other one. Do you know why it's going to be found in Luke chapter 21? Because where it's told to us in Matthew 24 is what? The 40 days. Matthew, uh, sorry, Luke 20, uh, sorry, not Matthew 24. Luke 24 is the 40 days. It's the 40 days of the Son of Man coming. They were in disbelief and didn't know, uh, they were freaking out. They didn't believe he was going to be there or that he was there in the flesh. And it says they were terrified. Well, that word terrified, only found twice, is right here in Luke chapter 21, right at the beginning of the story. And what is the time frame of Luke chapter 21? I've been teaching it for over two years. 
Luke chapter 21 is what? The 40 days. That's why we read, but when you shall hear of wars and commotions, you can kind of say some of that is happening now, right? Instability and disorder. Be not terrified. Be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. What is part of this terrified being connected to? Christ being here for 40 days. That's why it's only used twice and the other places found is in Luke 24. So it's not being terrified is also connected to his presence for 40 days. And that's why we see, then said he unto them, this is the time of seals, okay? In verse 10 and verse 11. In verse 12 is where the 40 days all starts. But before all of these in verse 10 and 11, they shall lay their hands on you. So he goes in to start talking about the 40 days. These events that are going to take place. Okay? Being not terrified of. Because at the same time about not being terrified. Let me go back. This same time about not being terrified. He's there in the midst of them. But are you ready? Watch this. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. Now we've heard this story before. We've seen the story in John, right? Uh, uh, doubting Thomas. You know, not until I see the scars in his hands and I can put my fingers in his side. All right? But you know one thing you're not going to hear in any of those stories? Is this right here. He doesn't once say in those stories that he's flesh and bone. Check this out. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Listen to this. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not, meaning if I was just a spirit, I would not have flesh and bones as you see me have brothers and sisters this is only found in luke chapter 24 now take into account everything i was just telling you take into account who luke mark and matthew are speaking to all of the revelation of all of those things the 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 false prophets and false christ and where they were lined up and who the different people are and what happens to Christ and the differences in each gospel. And now understand, we have one more to add to the list. This is Christ as the Son of Man in flesh and bone. This is not mentioned in Mark. It is not mentioned in Matthew. And do you know why? Because at those comings, he is no man in flesh and bone. He is only going to be the son of man in the form of flesh and bone during the 40 days that will begin the time of the 14 years of tribulation. I've been preaching it and teaching it for two and a half years now that there is a 40 days son of man that is going to happen whether people think we are nut jobs or not it is true it is 100 percent true and it is more evidence to add to our luke chapter 17 right here when he says but first remember we just read that in luke 21 as well but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation this final generation he is going to be rejected of again why so that none can say i never told you He's going to be here experiencing rejection 
again. I don't know what it means for him to suffer many things. The last thing we want to know is that Christ is going to suffer some things again. You know, we've had that conversation a number of times. Okay? I don't think it's like death or anything like that, but he's going to suffer because he's, he's coming to try to wake the world up. Remember the Muslims, even in the Quran, they know that somebody is coming for 40 days. They believe that that somebody coming for 40 days is who the Christians call the Antichrist. But you see, the whole world of the church, who actually is at least paying attention to the end times, is all being taught from Matthew. They're like a bunch of parrots, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Matthew 24. And so what happens? When the Son of Man does come in the flesh and bone for those 40 days, do you think all the church that's left is going to just believe him because of the miracles and these things that he's going to be doing? No. No. He's going to be rejected still. And the pain is going to come from that rejection. Because the time will have begun. See, these guys were freaking out. These guys are freaking out in Luke 24. It's probably the only reason as well that we see they were terrified. Right? You don't see anything about them being terrified in Mark or in Matthew. Only twice and both times are in Luke. Guys, this is awesome stuff. Greater evidence that Christ is going to be here in the flesh as the Son of Man. Like I said a moment ago, the, the, the Quran, the Muslims know that a guy is coming for 40 days. He's going to do great signs and wonders. And I think they even said stop the sun and he can do all sorts of things. But they, they say, don't follow him. You Christians, this is your antichrist. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's the son of man in flesh and bone. The Christians are going to suddenly, the, the sleeping left behind church, some people are going to fall and believe, not fall, but some people are going to follow and be for Christ. And they're going to realize and they're going to be waking up and they're going to come into understanding. But not the majority. The majority are going to start siding with the, with the Muslims and say, oh my goodness, that must be the Antichrist. We were told about Antichrist. We were told about Antichrist. Oh, really? He's not found in Luke. Nor is the false prophet. Christ is. So tell everybody. Tell everybody. Let If they're sleeping now and they don't want to hear it, if you tell them a little bit here and there once in a while, that even if they don't believe, when it begins to come to pass, brothers and sisters, I don't say that when these things begin to come to pass, they may remember. No, my prayer is that when these things begin to come to pass, they will remember and repent. They will remember and come to Christ. Not may, but will. Brothers and sisters, I was so happy to do this video. I feel recharged again. I feel energized. I love this. This is what I want to do always, right? I just want to keep doing it. I just want to keep sharing and sharing and sharing with you guys and bring it to more people and speak to people all over the place. People that want to listen and take the time to hear the truth of the revelations of the end of days. The truth is 14 years. It's two sets of seven with six and then rest. Six and then rest. The first six is for the church. Israel will have been destroyed, Jerusalem destroyed, and the Jews fleeing throughout the earth. And it will begin the time of the Christian's tribulation period. The time of testing for the church that's left behind. But there's great news because the great harvest comes after those first six years are over. They're going to see some terrible, fearful, devastating horrible things that they're going to experience but that is what is needed to wake people up i've said it a lot in the past 
if nothing happens, if if the Lord never brought this about, do you think the world would get better or worse? It would just get worse. It would get worse in the sense that nobody would ever think or need to bother to come to Christ. It must happen. He's going to allow it. The Father is going to allow it and bring it about so that people will hit their knees and call out, Lord, please forgive me. Please help me. Let me see and understand. The time of miracles like never before in the history of the earth. We've said that many times. Like never before in the history of the earth are going to be seen. Some incredible, incredible miracles. But like we always pray, we watch and pray always that we will have a balcony seat, right? That we'd be up there in the heavens praying for them, cheering them on, strengthening them. And for whoever the Lord has chosen and those who are going to be working, God bless them and strengthen them because we know He's about to what? We know he's about to open their understanding. Remember? He's about to open their understanding of the scriptures and give them the power to go and preach and teach repentance beginning at Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem during the 40 days will be surrounded, but it will not be destroyed until some point shortly after the 40 days because these brothers and sisters chosen to go out in Luke at the 40 day time they begin in Jerusalem Matthew and Mark's group is throughout the earth so the tr- the destruction of Jerusalem will not happen till the escape has happened the 40 days have taken place and The Lord has left and these guys now go out preaching from there. All right. So before I get too long winded, (laughs) because I could just keep going. Guys, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful for the support that you guys have sent. Uh, For all the prayers. I I pray you keep praying for my mother as well. Uh, Keep her in your prayers with so many of you. Not just my mother, but also for the many of you out there. uh, for, For your prayers that are needed for family and friends and for each other. You know, keep keep lifting each other up. Keep including each other in prayers. And please remember to keep my mother in them as well. And that her healing would be one of those supernatural, miraculous, miraculous now healings. That she can just be, boom, instantly right back at it. All right, guys. I love you. God bless you. And if you don't hear from me in another video before the 11th, I pray that that's the time. And that we'll see each other in the air. I love you guys. God bless you all. Thank you again. Bye for now.